Today I'll show you the two best techniques to quickly change the color of any object in Photoshop, even if it's white. So let's get started with step number one right now. Now for our first example, we're gonna be changing the color of something that already has a color. If you're trying to change the color of something that is white, you're gonna to need to be using the second example. I'll have timestamps down below to help you figure that stuff out. Now for this example, let's say I wanna change the color of this person's jacket. Of course, we can use something like the hue saturation adjustment layer, but to get a even better result, we're going to create a selection of the item that we want to change the color of. In this case, that is the jacket. It. So the best tool for the job, in my opinion, for this type of thing is the object selection tool. Going to the toolbar, I'll find the object selection tool right here, and then I'll go and set the mode to lasso. I'll also uncheck object finder so things don't get highlighted. I just find that kind of annoying personally, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. Now zooming into the photo so I get a better view of what's going on, I'm just going to click and drag around the edge of what I'm trying to select. So in this case, that is this jacket. Try to do your best to get as close to those edges as possible, but it does not need to be perfect in any way. Photoshop usually figures it out pretty well. So I'll continue around this way, down to here, up around that extra bit here, up and finish it off there. Photoshop will then try to find edges within that area, and in this case, it automatically snaps to the edge of this jacket. Now with that active selection, we're ready to go and create the hue saturation adjustment layer. Going to the adjustments panel, I'll click on the hue saturation adjustment right here. And because we had that active selection, it will automatically be applied to the hue saturation layer mask. Any areas that are white will be the only areas that will be affected by this particular adjustment. Double clicking on the hue saturation icon to open up the properties panel, we want to first go and sample the color range that we're trying to change. The easiest way to do that is by clicking this hand icon and then going and clicking somewhere on the object you want to change. In this case, that was the jacket. As you can see here, it automatically selects the magenta's color range. And you can double check that everything is properly selected by increasing the saturation slider to 100. As you can see, everything becomes really highlighted, anything that's selected. Or we can bring the saturation down to negative 100 instead. And in this case, it actually offers a little bit more insight because you can see that some areas did didn't actually go fully gray or desaturated. And that is because we don't have the proper color range selected right down here. Luckily, we can just extend this color range out by clicking first on this hard stop icon here. I'll click and drag this over like so, and notice how all of those areas that were not being desaturated before are now being desaturated. I'll zoom in a little further to get a better view at some other areas that might be missing. So as you can see around the buttons, we need to further extend our color range. So because that highlight is red, that indicates I need to go and move this towards the reds a little bit further like so until everything is included. I don't wanna to go too far because then I'm going to start to include these buttons, which I don't want to affect in this particular case. Now with this complete, we're ready to go and change the color of this object. And as you can see, it already has been changed to a degree just by adjusting the saturation. But I'll double click on the saturation and then first go and play around with the hue. So this will change the color of the color rather than the intensity or the lightness of it. So for example, if you didn't want to have that pink jacket, we could have a blue jacket or something like that, maybe yellow instead. Let's say we want to have a nice blue jacket, play around with the saturation, maybe make it a little bit more subtle, and then darken it down to give it a nice dark blue color. Now we can make this look totally different, again, just by changing that hue, changing around the saturation as well as the lightness accordingly. Now if you wanted to make this color look completely black or completely white, what we can do is bring that lightness slider all the way down to negative 100. This will basically remove any color from that object and then you'll have a black color instead. Alternative you can move this to plus 100 and then that way you'll have a white color instead of black. So playing around with all these sliders you can get some really great results and with the help of this layer mask here we can ensure that we're only editing the colors that are actually on our object and none of the colors that are in the surrounding areas of the photo. That way you get the best result possible. Now one final thing before we move on you might notice that when we zoom in there are some areas that were not included in our adjustment. And that is often because the selection that we created previously wasn't totally perfect. So with the hue saturation layer mask selected, we can grab our brush tool by pressing B 
Make sure our foreground color is set to white with a 100% opacity brush, and I'm going to use the soft round brush in this case. I can just now go and paint over any areas of issue like so. That way you can touch up any problems and ensure that the entire object that you're changing the color of actually has the colors changed and you're not missing any weird areas like I have been here. So again, just take a moment to go through with your brush tool and touch any of these things up. That way you'll get the best result possible. Now, before we move on, I know there is a lot of information coming your way right now. So to help these concepts stick, I created a free PDF lesson cheat sheet that you can download for free below. Just tell me where to send it and you'll get instant access to it. Plus stay up to date with all of my future cheat sheets in future lessons. Again, the link for that is down below this video and let's jump back into it. Now in this next example, the previous method that we used will not work because white actually doesn't have a hue. So the hue saturation adjustment layer won't make any difference to this color. So instead we need to overlay a color by creating a brand new color with a color fill layer. However, just like before, we need to begin by first selecting the object we want to change the color of, which in this case is this t-shirt. Once again, I'm going to use the object selection tool, clicking on it here in the toolbar, just going to the object selection tool. With the mode set to lasso, object finder unchecked, I'll just go and click and drag around the areas that I want to select, which in this case is the t-shirt. But for you, you'll just go and drag around whatever object you are trying to change the color of. I'll continue all the way around and connect to the beginning. Photoshop will automatically snap to the edges like so. If you have any mistakes as we have right here, you can just hold Alt or Option to subtract from the selection area. So I'll click and drag around while holding Alt or Option and this will remove this area from the selection and it will snap that selection edge onto our object correctly. I then want to go and add this extra area to our selection. So I'll hold the shift key to add to that selection, click and drag around this new area while holding shift, let go, and that will add to the selection area. Now with our selection complete, we're ready to go and add a color fill layer by going down to the bottom of the layers panel, clicking the effects option and going up to solid color. Now that selection will automatically be applied onto the color fill layer mask where we can now go and choose a color for our shirt. In this case, I'll choose a mint color like so and I'll click OK. Of course, this is just a color overlaying in a selection, but to make it actually blend in with the texture and the folds of the original t-shirt, we'll change the layer blending mode from normal down here to multiply. What this will do is allow those shadows to show through and all the textures, but it will blend that color in nicely to the white t-shirt. We can of course go and change this color at any time just by clicking on the thumbnail of the color fill layer, and we can go and change that color like so to whatever other other hue we desire. So this is how you need to approach things if you're trying to change the color of something that is specifically white and doesn't already have a hue, because if the object does have a hue, then you could just use the hue saturation adjustment layer. So although this process was pretty straightforward, it will certainly take some practice to get the hang of everything. Luckily, it will be super easy to remember by downloading my free lesson cheat sheet below this video. It summarizes all the steps we talked about here, so you have a guide to review anytime you forget some of these steps. Again, that's available totally for free below this video. And with that, I'll catch you back here next time.